One of the great challenges that A.W. Tozer saw coming to evangelical Christianity, meaning you and I in our day, was the idea that people want to be in charge. That somehow they want to exercise their own understanding as opposed to God's direction for their life as well as others' lives. And so we've grown up with this idea in America that somehow we have these heroes or these leaders that were going to lead us as opposed to we examining ourselves and finding whether or not we should be led by someone or allow God to lead us. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is very clear. It tells us to submit to earthly authorities as those that are in charge for they're put there for our benefit, that we can make use of that person that is in charge to protect us and to guide us in some ways. But the ultimate responsibility for our own life and the ultimate accountability for what we do in our life is really between ourselves and God. We still want to boss our own lives. Quench not the spirit from 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Doesn't everybody desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I have been asked. And the answer is, no, they don't. I suppose many people desire to be full, but not many desire to be filled. People want a measure of the Spirit, but they want to measure out how much the Spirit controls their life. I want to responsibly declare that before you can be filled with the Spirit, you must desire to be, and some people do not desire to be, filled to overflow. We ought to be very plain in our teaching that Satan has tried to block every effort of Jesus' church to receive from the Father her divine and blood-bought patrimony that the Holy Spirit should fill his church and that he should fill to overflowing individuals who make up his church, that every person in it ought to be a pastor, a missionary, a person sharing the word of the Lord and the testimony of Jesus. It is plain in the scriptures that the gentle and good Holy Spirit wants to fill us and possess us if we are Christians. This spirit is like Jesus, pure, gentle, sane, wise, peaceful, long-suffering, loving, enduring. He wants to possess you so that you are no longer in command of the little vessel that you are, the flesh that you occupy, and the person in which you are sailing your little boat. You may be a passenger on board or one of the crew, but you definitely are not in charge. The Spirit of God is now in command of the vessel. He is the one who is leading. The reason we object to it being that way is because we were born of Adam's corrupted flesh. We want to boss our own lives. We want to be in charge. It's the American way to rise to the occasion, to move up the ladder of success, to exercise our abilities to the point of being the one who's making the decisions. That is why we ask, are you sure that you want to be possessed by the Holy Spirit of the Father and of the Son? Are you ready and willing for your personality to be taken over by someone who is so much like Jesus that he's willing to lay down his life for his enemies as well as his friends? Are you sure that you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Because the reality of the beginning of the truth of what you are boils down to the fact of how honest you can be before the God who knows you. Each and every one of us, we're told, up to a measure of faith are given a certain amount of knowledge that we need to apply wisdom to. And most of us, if we're honest, don't tell the truth. We lie to ourselves and we make up excuses for how we are, the way we are, as opposed to being honest about who we are. And the bottom line is, we're all sinners saved by grace, but that's an excuse when you add the last part. 
Because the reality is we're all sinners. And I like to tell people on video, especially when I'm looking at myself in light of Tozer, and especially when I'm sharing that with you, that given five minutes alone, I'll dive into sin just as fast as I can, except that the Holy Spirit stopped me from doing such a thing. Because I don't like the consequences of what happens, though I may enjoy the sin for a season or a moment. Because you see, I want to do what I want to do, rather than allow God to do what He wants to do in me. We always assume somehow in our spiritual psyche that we're going to choose to obey when the reality is honestly if we're truthful about who we are except that God intervened in our life we choose to rebel more often than we choose to obey.